The following program may contain course language. Viewer discretion is advised. This is a special live CBC Music presentation. How are you? This is really weird. This is really weird. I didn't even know the marquee existed in the daytime. I thought it was just like a parking lot and it sprung up around nine o'clock. Like Matt Mays came and stepped on a lever and it just opened up or something like that. Nice to be here in Halifax too. I haven't been to Halifax in a long time. It's nice to be here. How much time do I have? I got a, um, I, I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this. I'm usually pretty subtle about it, but I'm from St. John's, Newfoundland. Um, but it's been nice. I'm here with a crowd of mainlanders. I'm here with a crowd of, from Ontario uh, who came up from the show and they were showing them a great time. I've been showing them some of my favorite places, you know, I'm planning on taking to all my favorite pilgrimages, you know, and you'd think that would be, you know, Peggy's Cove or maybe the Citadel. I'm mainly thinking Pizza Corner. <laughs> like that's my, that's, my, that's my plan for tonight. We have a really amazing show for you tonight, uh, uh, this evening. I don't know what this is. This afternoon, I don't know, uh, this nebulous time where you shouldn't drive. Uh, it's really nice to be here and uh, we're gonna do, this is my friend Mitch over here. Will you say hello to my friend Mitch? Um, what Mitch has asked me to do is to give, uh, for you to give him as much applause, thunderous applause uh, as you possibly can, just in case uh, I shag up, which let's be honest, entirely likely. And we can make it sound like you guys were enthused by it beside, and not uh, incredibly disgusted. But we're gonna have Mitch, uh, so in, for like 20, 30 seconds, I'm gonna count you in. This and I need is you to a give special as much live CBC. As can. can you do that The for following me? program All may right, contain cool. course language. Viewer discretion Three, is advised. Three, two, one. This is a special live CBC Music presentation. Amazing, incredible, you guys are amazing. So here's what I need you to know. This is a radio show, this is going out live. Uh, not live, but you know what I mean. Pretend live on the radio tomorrow. We want everyone in the rest of Canada to be jealous and to wish they were here, because really they should be, and they should be jealous, am I right? Yeah, right. So laugh as hard as you can possibly laugh, cheer as loud as you possibly can. We are about five seconds away. Thanks a lot for coming out, guys. We're streaming cbcmusic.ca and on the Facebook page. Are you ready? <laughs> Live from the Marquee Ballroom in Halifax, Nova Scotia at the ECMAs, this is Q. I'm Tom Power, you're about to hear from some of the biggest musicians coming out of Canada East Coast. Rose Cousins and Alan Doyle are here. One of the most exciting bands making music right now, Neon Dreams are here. Doing some comedy, Jonathan Torrance and Cheryl Han are here. And that is not at all. Teaming up to perform one of the most powerful songs of the year, David Miles and Classified are here. You are gonna hear all of that and a whole lot more all coming up on this special edition of Q, live at the East Coast Music Awards from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Check one, 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 there I am. So these guys started out not too long ago playing local gigs just down the street at the Halifax Pavilion. <laughs> nice to see six people in this audience were at the Halifax Pavilion. <laughs> now you can hear them all over the radio. You can see them touring all across North America. You might've heard them perform with Rhea May and Cardinal Offishal. The Prime Minister is a big fan of theirs, which I, I guess is a good thing. I'm not entirely sure. And we asked them to give a special stripped down version of this song. One of the biggest bands to break out of Halifax in these last few years. We're so lucky to have them. Please, we, we, please welcome performing Rescue from their Wolf, Princess and Me EP. Ladies and gentlemen, Neon Dreams. <laughs> There's so much desperation in the air You're the only one out here I can compare The universe has led me right to you We 
we both needed a rescue. Ooh, it's hard to walk like that. You're giving me a hard time. God, you make me say, oh. you come to when you need a rescue whoa 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 I'll be the one that you come to when you need a rescue yeah there's so much conversation in the air if you don't believe in love just stop and stare the universe has led me right to you we both needed a rescue Oh, it's hard to walk like that. You're giving me a hard old time. Now you make me say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll be the one that you come to when you need a rescue. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll be the one that you come to when you need a rescue. I'll be the one when you rescue chasing the sun when you need a rescue you don't have to run no i'll be your light when you need a rescue you don't have to fight when you need a rescue you champion your night i'll be the one that you come to when you need a rescue there's so much desperation in the air you're the only one out here i can compare the universe let me write to you. We both needed a rescue. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll be the one that you come to when you need a rescue. Whoa, 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 I'll be the one that you come to when you need a rescue. I'll be the one when you need a rescue. Chasing the sun when you need a rescue. You don't you come to when you need a rescue. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen from Halifax, Nova Scotia, it's Neon Dreams, Frank Cadillac on vocals, Matt Gatz on guitar, and Adrian Morris on drums. Thank you so much for coming and helping us open up our show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Oh, man, it's a pleasure. So, uh, so Matt, is the story, let me get this right, the story is that Frank had a group of four Neon Dreams, he wanted you to join, but you kept turning him down, is that That's right? That's absolutely true. Why, 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 why were you so reluctant to join this band? I don't know, like, maybe <laughs> the persistence? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was really dorky looking. Yeah, you were, you, it was a little, what made you finally cave? Um, Frank, every day he went into school, he'd like, just be ten times better. And I just knew, like, in my heart, if I ever did anything with music, it would be with him. Frank, that's beautiful, man. That's a, cool, that's a beautiful thing. Wow. That was I know. sweet. That was very... I, I love you, Matt. They <laughs> seem they, they seem surprised by that. Like, that's <laughs> a beautiful thing. I'm, like, normally not nice. He's cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was just in the back screaming at them. I didn't want to say anything. Frank, what was it about Matt that made you want to, uh, you know, needed to have him in the band? Well, he's like the coolest guy in school, <laughs> playing guitar. We were skipping, I was skipping class, and just like, yeah, he, he was doing too. And I was like, hey, you want to learn some Billy Talent covers? And he's like, yeah. The moral here, if you skip school, you're cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm also a, a version of that too, 100%. Yeah, yeah. My, my teachers don't really understand any of this at all. No. Yeah. I think he went to our school. Uh, Adrian, um, as I mentioned, the Halifax Pavilion uh, yeah. on, on the way in here, you guys you know, are all Haligonians. Uh, you all cut your teeth here. You're all from here. What is it about Halifax that can create a great band? It's a good fertile ground for a good band. I think there's just like a really supportive scene here. Everybody kind of goes out, sees each other, promotes each other. I think it's like, it's like an East Coast thing. Like all the East Coasters stick together, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up one more time for our friends in Neon Dreams, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
You know, one of the best parts about putting on this show in front of a live audience that we have here at the Marquee in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I know, that was, uh, that was pretty slick. Is that you can do some of the things you otherwise can't do when you're in a windowless studio on your own. Meaning mainly that I actually have to get dressed for work when I do this, you know, I just... <laughs> I can't just go in wearing pajama pants. Uh, but one of the other amazing things you can do, in addition to actually seeing the people who listen to the show, which is terrifying, you can actually have a comedian on to perform some of their material live. We just started doing this in Vancouver. This is our second time having a stand-up on the show. And, and, and since we're in Halifax, home of some of the best comedy in this country, we could not pass up this opportunity. The next guest you're about to hear, you might be able to call her Dr. Soon. She's cl this close to earning her PhD in English Lit here in town at Dalhousie University. Uh, she is a member of a group that I spent way too much long on YouTube when I should have been in class or I should have been doing something productive and just watching their sketches over and over again. She's a member of Picnic Face. <laughs> here to perform for you live right now. I'm so excited about this. Please welcome Cheryl Han. Thank you for having me. The energy in this room is so great, and I want to keep it up here. So real quick, where are all my devout Christians in the house? I can't, can't hear you. <laughs> so where are all my devout Christians in the house? Oh, yeah, let's keep it hype. When I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus. Jesus. When I say died for, you say our sins. Died for. Our sins. Died for. Our sins. Oh, yeah, now just the ladies. When I say we shouldn't, you say own property. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. Yeah, ladies, and if you're on your period, turn to the man nearest you and say, I deserve this for betraying you in the garden. <laughs> Try it. Just try it real quick. Um, we're in the East Coast, so I know at least some of you grew up in Christian households. I definitely did. I'm from Newfoundland. I grew up in a Pentecostal Christian home. Uh, <laughs> okay, some people know what Pentecostal Christianity is. If you're unfamiliar, I'll break it down for you real quick. Uh, the first rule is don't do anything fun ever or you and everyone you've ever loved will be boiled in the belly of a demon for a thousand years. Um, and also hold this snake and if it bites you, it's cause you're bad. Uh, growing up Pentecostal was kind of fun. At my church we did like speaking in tongues, which is kind of cool. It's kind of like a free improv workshop. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're filled with the Spirit of the Lord, yes. And <laughs> can I get a suggestion for a place where you wouldn't expect to have a party? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Mother's Day is coming up next week. Do we have any mothers in the room? Nice, that's so great for, for you. That's cool for you guys. I, I, I can't do that. Oh, like physically I can do it. It's all, it all works. Um, I just don't want to ever. So that's my choice. Um, <laughs> I did just become an aunt though, which has been really awesome. Um, my sister had a baby recently, which is kind of crazy. Like, she's 23. Um, when I was 23, I went to a music festival and took some acid from a guy in a skeleton costume, but... Um, <laughs> different strokes takes different strokes. Um, so that's cool. Anyway, I feel like I, I don't know if I'm a good aunt. I think I'm a bad aunt, because of the whole acid thing, for one. <laughs> and for two, like, I can't do some things that people do with babies. Like, I can't do baby talk does not work, does not compute. Because partially it's because like I don't get why people do it in the first place, because it's not like babies need help being more dumb. <laughs> so they're like pretty dumb. And my sister gets mad when I say, you know, like your baby's dumb, but... <laughs> <laughs> I do have some anecdotal evidence. Okay, two quick stories here. Um, one, 
once I was sitting with a baby and I was like, hey baby, a simple question. Um, <laughs> what type of art was Picasso famous for making? <laughs> and she said, dada. Um, it's cubism, you idiot. <laughs> Second example. Uh, once when I picked up the baby, she tried to suck on my boob. I was like, excuse me, baby, I am not your mom, and I should be allowed to come topless to this barbecue if I want. <laughs> Stop objectifying me, baby. <laughs> I know I probably sound like every woman comic my age who's like, oh, all my friends are having babies and I feel old, but um, all of my friends are having babies and I feel old, so <laughs> that's just what's up. But anytime I'm having that old feeling, I have a trick. I look at myself in the mirror and I say, Cheryl, you are like a fine wine. You are often seen next to a pile of cheese. <laughs> Thank you, that's my time, you guys have been awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheryl Hayne. Hey, this is Jen Grant, and from my neck of the woods in Lake Echo, Nova Scotia, all the way to yours, you're listening to Q with Tom Power, live at the Marquee Ballroom in Halifax. Welcome back to Q, live at the Marquee Ballroom in Halifax, Nova Scotia. My name is Tom Power. We're having a beautiful time here in Halifax, and you might know these next two musicians from a little song they released a few years back entitled Inner Ninja. When I say little song, that little song became a massive hit when five times platinum is now one of Canada's biggest selling hip hop singles of all time. It was just at the beginning of a long collaborative partnership between these two. And while you're gonna hear them perform together live right now, I should also probably mention, it is not just music that connects these two. They have a lot of love for this city that they call home. And Dave, I'm not gonna mention you're from New Brunswick. <laughs> Performing a song that is still sadly more topical than ever. This is Classified and David Miles performing Powerless. <laughs> Go ahead. I am sorry that she is affected. I did not ever intend to hurt anyone. How in the name of God could you think that she wouldn't be affected? How? You have no idea how devastated we are feeling because of what you did. She wonders why nobody hears her cry. The footsteps in the hallway have her terrified. Scared as she looks into his staring eyes, he crawls into her bed and she just lays there almost paralyzed, feeling powerless. She feels so powerless. She closes her eyes and hides under the covers as her father tried to touch her. He took advantage of her, took all her innocence from her. She tried to explain to mother, but she said she don't believe it. Nobody, Nobody wanna talk, talk about it. Cause this don't happen to good people. This don't happen to good people. The age of 17, she finally went to the police, charged him for the crimes he did, finally took him off the streets. Then at the trial, she had to relive it all again. On a stand explaining how this man had took her life within. Abused for nine years, he got four months and a bit. She got a lifelong sentence, he got a slap on the wrist. It happens all too much, but too many keep it hush hush. How these kids supposed to trust us, man? Don't let them feel powerless. powerless. I'm not sad, I'm strong. But I won't feel powerless, won't feel powerless, won't feel powerless. Thank you to my hero 
I hope to meet you someday. Can anybody out there hear me? I hope somebody can hear me. Cause I don't wanna be here no more. One day, one day. And we hope. Cause I don't wanna be here no more. Maybe one day, one day. Look. I don't want to be here no more. Shout out where my birthplace is and to the First Nations and to the people making the best out of the worst cases. Too many unanswered questions and open murder cases. Without a voice, how we supposed to encourage changes? My grandmother was part white and part native. In fact, my high school was part white and part native. Personally connected, I met people who've been affected. They've been asking for some help, but they've been continually neglected. How many more of these indigenous women have to go missing before somebody will listen, huh? We need a change of conditions. Maybe it's blatant racism. Maybe there's hate in the system, but we got to fix it because the people feel powerless, and the mothers feel powerless, and the fathers feel. Powerless. Like, don't anybody care about my daughter? Don't anybody care if she's alive or she's been slaughtered? They deserve to know so they can go and bury her with honor. Big up to those fighting on and everybody fighting strong. I wish that I could do more than just write a song. I feel so powerless. powerless. I'm not sad I'm strong, but I won't feel powerless, won't feel powerless, won't feel powerless. Say, thank, thank you, you to my hero, I hope to meet you someday. Uh, can anybody out there hear me? I hope somebody can hear me, because I don't want to be here no more. And we say, one day, one day. Uh, I don't want to be here no more One day, one day uh, I don't want to be here no more One day, one day Maybe I don't want to be here no more Hopefully one, one day, day, one day Classified and David Miles Thank you David, I want to, um, David, I want to start with you because this wasn't a song that you were originally on the recording of. No. And this is one of the first times you guys have played it together, right? You That's right. Yeah. We played it on the weekend last, just to warm up, kind of all set up for this. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate yeah, it. We got to make sure we're ready, you know? <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel the first time you heard this song? I could, you know, I often go out to the studio and check things as they're coming along. Oh, Nenfield. <laughs> it is. <laughs> In his garage, I drive out from Northern Halifax, out to Enfield, check it out. And you know, I'm, I'm a, I think that I love what Luke does. As a songwriter, I just love it. And I felt like as soon as I heard this song, I was like, you've reached another level. For right. me, it was another level. It was, it's such an important subject. It would be so easy to do wrong. Mm -hmm. I remember listening to the first time and feeling like every moment I was almost nervous yeah. for him. Yeah. And then he just, he just, he spoke about it so honestly and so beautifully, and it really moved me a, a lot. I was like, this is the best thing you've ever done. Well, it's really interesting because... Uh, Thank you, bro. <laughs> because, Luke, last time, last time you came on the show, it was to debut this, this music video shot by a great Nova Scotia director, Annie Hines. Yeah. And, um, and you said as much. You said to me, yeah, I'm a little nervous about how this is going to be received. Yeah, even when we did the interview, like, I was kind of sitting there, because I've had people, you know, people even at the video shoot kind of being like, don't mess this up. Yeah. You know, so yeah. making the song was one thing. I felt like I was doing something right. I think it came out how I was trying to do it. But then when I got into interviews and talking about it, I was like, okay, that's another battle. Because I'm, like I said, I'm not like a politically correct person. No, right, right. I'm just common sense, try to be a good person. But you also that's said, kind of my thing. you said something to me. You said like, you know, what I'm really looking for is, is the reception from people when they come up and talk to me. So I'm wondering, well, how's the reception been so far? Amazing. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, thank you. But no, just people sharing their stories and people just showing their appreciation of some someone that's not necessarily from the world talking about this type of stuff. Right. It's, so a, it's, 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 it's really, it's great. I, I agree with class. This is some of your best work you've ever done. Thank you, man. I agree with David, I should say. I mean, you can, no, you can me, agree you, with me you if you want. You can call me class, too. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Well, you're looking classy with your little suit. Thank you very much. You're looking, you're looking yeah, good. Yeah, you took the tie off tonight. I dressed up for radio. I took my tie off. I'm trying to loosen up around <laughs> class there. He's making me crazy. So how did this, how did this whole, I think we were all a little bit surprised when this thing happened. When like, this thing? When this whole thing <laughs> happened. This thing called love. Like, what yeah. is <laughs> Class, how did this, was this, I heard it was about ping pong and, and, and hip hop. It was. We met each other at uh, the Music Nova Scotia Awards in Liverpool, wasn't it? 
That's right. That's right. That White Point Beach Lodge. Yeah. Great place. <laughs> Shout out. We Johnny. celebrate our anniversary there every year. <laughs> <laughs> over a game of ping pong but yeah it was like three in the morning the night was done everyone kind of went to bed and i was downstairs at the ping pong table he walked in he's like you play ping pong i was like great I play line ping pong. great pickup line that's pretty good yeah, buddy. yeah it's nice that's how we got his wife same line yeah yeah yeah, yeah. hey baby you play ping pong <laughs> who's better who's better at ping pong oh come on i just saw two hands go up that's confidence Dave's that's pretty confidence. much better at everything than me so i'm gonna take the ping pong <laughs> But it, it was it was very interesting. Dave, I knew you before that. I knew you, you know, as a as a solo singer songwriter. And I, I'm interested to hear what you said earlier because it was that you, you learn a lot from class all the time. You learn a lot from Luke all the time. What in particular, as a, as a songwriter, do you get from cl collaborating with someone like? I Spider? I love the fact that you know I grew up like learning, kind of Royal Conservatory scales and chords and minor major and all the real technical business behind music, and that's how I understood it. And class doesn't think like that. He's really thinking about energy. I think it's partially because you, you grew up sampling music, so he thinks about mo like really energy in songs, little bits of songs. Mm -hmm. So I can sit there and sing a song, and he's like, I like that part, I like that part. I like to say that he doesn't listen to music like an average musician does, and it's super valuable. Because I, that's why I think he's one of the best producers in the country, because he's able to hear it as other people hear it. Sometimes people get too close to it. You know, He's got a little bit of distance in a cool way, at least for me, that I really, I really value it a lot. Classified, how about you? What, what do you get out of working with someone like Dave? He knows things that I don't know. <laughs> like he said, I'm not a classically trained musician. I can't read chords and go, okay, this is how I'm going to play. But I can sit at a piano, hit a few things and go, oh, I like how this feels. Mm -hmm. Dave knows, you know, the other side of it of like, no, if you're doing this, this is a cool thing we can do. We can go to this. And I'm like, oh, I had no idea that right. that was just something you could just do, you know? Mm -hmm. So he... You know, and, but that's where we kind of connect because at the same time, as much as he knows the chords and the technical part of it, he really works off vibe and feel too. So if it's something w that we're both like, oh, let's try this and it works. And he's like, technically this doesn't work, but it feels great. Let's feels just good. go for yeah, it. Right. So. Well, this, this is amazing. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Classified and David Miles. You are listening to Q Live at the East Coast Music Awards in Halifax. I'm Tom Power. There's lots more to come today. In just a few minutes, you're going to hear from Jonathan Torrance, who's fresh off hosting this weekend's big awards show. He's going to look back on what it was like to launch his TV career right in Halifax. Plus, very special live performances from Rose Cousins and Alan Doyle. Stick around. Q live at the East Coast Music Awards in Halifax is back right after this. Oh, my God. Oh my God, can I get some level? Can I get some level? Um, I don't think my wireless is on. Hey, Al, can I get some wireless? Thanks. Um, I think okay, we're about halfway through. Everyone feeling good? I tell you what I didn't say at the beginning, because I didn't, I, mean, I think you probably tell from my closed Mr. Burns-like body language, is that I was terrified. Like, it's one thing to do a show in Vancouver where I can be like, hey, I'm from the East Coast, you guys don't know anything. It's, um, <laughs> It's another, by the way, we're not on the radio right now, so I'm talking like this. Um, it's another thing to do it in front of your own people, so this is, this is amazing. We asked our friend Joel Plaskett a little, couple, a little bit of his memories of the marquee. He sent this in. I want you to take a listen to this. Hey, Tom, it's Joel Plaskett, and I wanted to talk about the marquee club here in Halifax, one of my favorite venues of all time. I've had so many good times in that room, either watching bands or being on stage and playing shows. The emergency cut our teeth in that building, went playing hell downstairs. I remember when they had month of Mondays and then upstairs on the marquee stage, we played there so many times and did it. had a New Year's Eve gig there for a number of years. And I think my favorite show of all time might be New Year's Eve, 2005 into 2006. It was the last show that Ian McGettigan, an old friend of mine, uh, was playing with us. He'd been our bass player for a couple of years and he'd played in Thrush Hermit as well. And he was moving on to other things. So we knew we had to have a celebratory night. And so to uh, help with that, we flew in some friends from the UK, Paul and Stuart, Welsh twins, sleeved in tattoos. They stepped off the, off the plane wearing matching white cowboy boots with box, little boxes in their hands of 45 singles so they could DJ the night with Slade and Thin Lizzy records. 
and uh, they, they went by the name the unemployable Welsh scum but we employed them that night to DJ this uh, this this event and so they were on stage with us and we set up a bar on stage so we could have more friends there and we had this fantastic night of music playing I remember at the end of the night we were all up there playing Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith and uh, Teenage Kicks by The Undertones and um, and then I think finally at the end of the night we were playing my song Come On Teacher Ian, Dave Marsh and I, the three of us on stage and Dave and Ian had uh, developed this routine where Dave would be playing the, tra the drums with the maraca in his right hand and he'd throw it up in the air Ian would start playing his bass with the left hand and catch the maracas and keep going and so they did that and then Ian threw them up in the air I caught the maracas, hit the fuzz pedal, was soloing with my left hand, looked out at the audience, everyone was smiling, looked at the band, and everyone on stage, and everyone was smiling. And I thought, I feel like Michael Jordan, and I'm playing in the Chicago Bulls. It was a great night, uh, and uh, I remember, oh man, it went late too, and I took a cab home. I think I threw up on the front lawn, but I woke up the next day with a smile on my face. Long live the Marquee Club. Love that place. <laughs> All right. That's nice of Joel to send that in. I feel like Wayne Ronstadt on the road again. That was good. I asked Joel Plaskett what he thought about... That doesn't sound like Wayne Ronstadt at all, but <laughs> unless he's here, no one's going to call me on it. Um, thanks for doing this. So we're in about, what about, 20 seconds away. We're going to start the second half of the show. We've got Jonathan Torrance and Rose Cousins and Alan Doyle show showing up, I hope. And we are going to have a, a, a dandy old time. We're halfway through the show already, if you can believe that. So let's hear all the energy you got. Let's hear all the excitement you got. Let's make the Ontarians jealous as if they're not already. So let's do it. Great. Live from the Berkey Ballroom in Halifax at the East Coast Music Awards, you're listening to Q on CBC Radio 1, Sirius XM 169, and from PRI or Public Radio International. I'm Tom Power. So, we're having a good time here at the Marquee. This next guest you're about to hear from, there's a good chance you watched him grow up on television. He actually launched his television career right here in Halifax when he was just a teenager. He filmed shows like Street Sense, pretty close to where we are right now. You might remember he got even bigger after that, where he hosted his own talk show, a little show called Jonovision. And from there, he kept on popping up on popular shows like Mr. D, and Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> These days, you can hear him talking about Canadianity on the podcast he hosts with his good buddy, Jeremy Taggart. This year, he had the huge job of hosting the East Coast Music Awards. Please join me in welcoming J-Rock himself. Give it up for Jonathan Torrance. <laughs> So, hi. Hi. I want to point out that when we just hugged just then, John said, were you talking about Wayne Ronstadt? Do you know why? There are three marginal impressions I do in Canadian <laughs> entertainment. I know one one of is Wayne Ronstadt from On the Road Again. <laughs> the other is Lyndon McIntyre from The Fifth Estate. And what's the third the one? The third is Tom Power from Newfoundland. <laughs> Maybe uh, if you're like me and you grew up in Newfoundland, uh, you have heirs. And maybe you grew up listening to music. And, and, and maybe you had that special friend. And, and, and maybe you called them once a week just to talk about music that you heard. <laughs> Our next guest had the same experience. Please welcome Tom Power from Newfoundland. Oh, good. We tease because we love. Oh, we tease because we love. We actually met at CBC in Toronto, member. You took me for a cup of coffee. You were guest hosting the older version of this yeah. show. Yeah, and then you... Uh, the uppercase version of this show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I said, us East Coasters have to stick together in the six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because Drake's pelting us <laughs> with uh, apples. No kidding. And yelling us about Anne Murray. Yeah. yeah. That's how it is in Toronto. I don't know if you've ever been. But you walk down the street, and if you're from the East Coast, people just pelt you with apples and ask you about Anne Murray. Dear Diary, you'll never guess who I seen in Kensington Market today. <laughs> Bruno Gerussi. <laughs> it was nuts. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to wear my uh, tiny guitar shirt from the John Lennon collection. True story. Yeah. Got it for Christmas. Oh, yeah. From Sandy's Menswear and the T-Dot, mm -hmm. Truro. Oh. <laughs> and uh, this is my first opportunity to wear it. 
So uh, I know we're, we're going to play a game in a second, but, but first I wanted to ask you, you, you hosted the East Coast Music Awards this year. How did it go? You, when you say you wanted to ask me, does that mean you've thought better of it? Yeah, now I'm not. So I'm going to move on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pass. <laughs> Um, it went really well. I was so honored to be a part of it, and I think the organizers did a great job of paying loving tribute to where we came from mm -hmm. and also celebrating this critical moment in our collective history. Why is it such a critical moment? Well, because you look at an act like Neon Dreams, for example. They won the golden ticket. They were on an arena tour across the country, and then circumstances beyond their control put them in a position where y they had to prove that the right thing and the easy thing is not always the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they made a decision that negatively impacted their career, one could argue. And that's not fair, but it is important. And it was awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's great to see them perform on the show. Um, Kinley Dowling, incredible. as you know from yep. Hey Rosetta, yeah, incredible. stepped into the spotlight by herself and won two awards, as did Rose Cousins, as did Jen Grant. It was like PEI Ladies Night. <laughs> it was awesome. It was just great. So um, you. Play this game on your podcast. Yes, you it's and called I, Slanguage. You and I were texting about this. What are we going to do? Because we already played one of your games on the show last time we were on. We played and hit, you beat me at my own game. I beat you at Tom Hit the Power from yeah. Newfoundland. From Newfoundland. You by did. the way, by the way, I, I just I, I just want to mention that. Go ahead. It, it, what was it, it you want to say? It's, it's great, great to have you here. And uh, as a friend of mine, I am Tom Power from it, It's great to be here. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Dueling Tom. What's the plural <laughs> of Tom? So we're going to play Slanguage. And you have. So how does this work? You have an advantage because Newfoundland is known for its colorful language. That's a way of putting it, yeah. We're going to try to stump each other on slang. I picked slang from the Maritime Provinces. You picked slang from Newfoundland. Yeah, I sure did. So I'm going to give you a phrase, and you're going to have to guess what it means. You ready? Yeah. Let's rearrange our shorts. <laughs> Don't yell it out if you know it. <laughs> By applause. Does anyone know it? Hold on. Hello, sir. Thank you. Yeah. He, ca he, he came up with it. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's regroup. Let's figure out what we're going to do next. Let's have a dance. Let's get up and rearrange our shorts. Where's that from? Um, it's from just outside of Truro, okay. a suburb of Truro. <laughs> I say it in Truro. Yeah. <laughs> you know where Lower Onslow is? Yeah. It's just above that, Upper Onslow. All right, I'm gonna, I figured I'd start with a nice, easy one. Okay. The, maybe the most popular Newfoundland expression. Yeah. So you should be able to get this one. Should I guess the answer first? Does it mean drinking? <laughs> <laughs> It means drinking and Rex Murphy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, what do you have? Oh, yeah, how are you today? Okay, good. Sure, there yeah. you go. Ding, ding, ding. Pretty On an early date with my wife, she said, give her the onions, bud. Pona, she said that to you? Yeah, and I was like, dear diary, met my love of my life today. I'm going to put a ring on it. Give her the onions, Bob. I what does that mean? I want to go for something lascivious, but I won't, because this is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, where you get to say words like lascivious. <laughs> and I want to guess Aimed. that it's uh, driving and putting a bit of gas in the car. I was driving slow. Give her the onions, Bob. Yeah, across good. the train tracks. Good. That's yeah, good. good. All right. Um, I'll give you the word, and I'll, I'll put it in a sentence if you need me to type. Okay. Job say. <laughs> I'm glad it's not a spelling bee. <laughs> Can you use it in a sentence? Um, ask me if it's going to rain tomorrow. Is it going to rain tomorrow? Bye, job say. <laughs> I'm going to guess it means some variation on I guess we'll see. It means um, job say, job to say, it's a job to say, hard it's to hard say. to say. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Job say. Mm -hmm. Everyone in Newfoundland any such Newfoundlanders? A hurry. Any Newfoundlanders in the house tonight? Did you guys all know Job Say? All right, good, good, good. good. Um, this is from PEI weather legend Boomer Gallant. <laughs> talk of dirt coming. Hold on, talk of dirt coming. Talk of dirt coming? Yeah, talk of dirt coming. I think they were on my show like three months ago. What? <laughs> uh, talk of dirt coming means there's some bad weather coming. Bad weather on the horizon. Yeah, yes. Right, right. You are destroying me at Slanguage. Um, all right, let's do one more each. Okay. Um, sure, but don't be so crooked. Pardon? <laughs> sure, but don't be so crooked. Oh, okay. Um, uh, does that mean someone who is unfair in a business practice? Crooked? No, it means... Um, anybody? Contrary. 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 Yeah. Okay, good. So, so don't be so crooked. Don't be so crooked. All right, last all right. one. Last okay. one. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, this one from Bette McDonald, Cape Breton comedian and funny, funny gal. 
were the clampers ever slippy? <laughs> now, in fairness, slippy is P-E-I, but clampers is Cape Breton. Were the clampers ever slippy? Does anyone know? <laughs> were, the, were the clampers ever slippy? <laughs> yeah. Were the clampers? Like glamping? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. being in a nice tent? No. No. Clampers, chunks of ice in the bay. The kids would try to hop from chunk of ice to chunk of ice. And you were they ever too Or as we'd say in PEI, chunk of ice to chunk of ice. <laughs> and you'd try to stay on it without slip, slipping off. And in PEI, things are slippy, not slippery. So clampers, were the clampers ever slippy? Fell in the bay. There you go. Pretty good. You Pretty might good. have a conniption. I say conniption too. Do you? We say conniption. It's our difference. We, we, found, it, we, found, we found it together. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Torres, Thank give him so another much. round of applause. I'm gonna go back to Toronto and as soon as I see someone there, I'm gonna go, well, you know, were the clampers ever slippy? <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, our next guest is one of this country's favorite songwriters. Uh, she took home album and song of the year at the ECMAs this year. I first heard her perform at the ECMAs just over 10 years ago on Prince Edward Island, her home province. Back then, back when she took that stage, we all knew we all knew that this was someone special and this was someone we'd be seeing for a very, very long time to come. I should mention while she remains PEI's own, she's also a very proud Haligonian these days too. You're gonna hear lots more about that in a second. Here to perform from her ECMA winning album, Natural Conclusion, please give it up for my friend and yours, Rose Cousins. <laughs> Take my ears, I won't use them. They no longer hear the music, just silence and walls, no footsteps in the It's beaten, it fought hard and was defeated, I didn't give up, just wasn't.
Ladies and gentlemen, Rose Cousins. Hi, Rose. Hi. Come on in, come on in. <laughs> Thank you. So first off, congratulations. Thank you so much. How did it feel? It felt great. Yeah, it's, it's great. I love the ECMA's time. I love when everyone's together. Um, not unlike what Adrian said from Neon Dreams, this is the best place to make music and to be a part of a music scene because we are so supportive and it just felt like this beautiful boost and, and uh, affirmation. I just, I'm really proud to be from here. When you say, when you say supportive, I'm, I, elaborate on that a little bit for me. Because I, mean, I think people think their music scene, everywhere you go, they all look out for one another, but there is something really special going on here. Yeah, I think we grow up in small towns. I mean, I grew up on a road um, <laughs> <laughs> outside of the small town and I think community is, uh, we are, we are, grow we grow up in communities and we understand deeply the sense of community and, and uh, we help each other. You know, I, I would drive down the road and, you know, see Earl from down the road and be like, oh, Earl's walking to Kensington again. I'll just see if I'll give him a drive. You know, your tendency is to help and to, to reach out and to connect and, and to, you know, help each other along. And I think that that lends beautifully. Uh, and seamlessly to the music community as well. Tell me a little bit about uh, your early days in Halifax. Um, I, I was, we were doing some research, we found a place called the Tickle Trunk, just not too far yes. from here, pretty important to you? Down Spring Garden Road. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist anymore, but I, but I would go every Tuesday night. Um, my friend, my now friend Dale Letcher hosted an open mic night every Tuesday. Right, I mean you were like a, you were working as a volleyball e person, is this right? I was not working as a volleyball person, but I was playing volleyball at Dow. It's not, I, a, I, I don't not a paid position. I, I want to point this out, Rose, that I am such a natural athlete. Thank you athlete. for pointing out my, athle yeah. my athletic. I am <laughs> such a natural athlete. I call being a volleyball player An working occupation. as a volleyball -y person. For sure. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is how, uh, that's how astute I am, really, at the ball. I call it volleyball -y We wouldn't, in yeah. PEI, we would just call that winners because we're just really good. Yeah. In PEI. Winners where I got this jacket. Yes. Yeah, pretty good. So do you remember what song you sang? Do you remember that first gig, at the first open mic you played? Oh, I probably sang like a Indigo Girl song or a Sarah McLaughlin song, maybe, maybe a Tracy Chapman, something like that. What was that moment that you knew, uh, I think I'm, I'm gonna be able to do this? Um, when I was doing a terrible job at the job I was doing. Volley <laughs> Volleyballing. No, I was no. years later. I played open mics for probably five years before I ever played my own song into a microphone and, uh, and then years after that before I quit my job and did it. You knew then. Yeah. Um, you've been on the road an awful lot. Yeah. We were just talking a little bit about the community that you, th that I is great for fermenting a band here, for getting a band going. You travel, I mean, how many dates are you out right now these days? Just a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what keeps you coming home now? I get the same uh, sensation when I come home. I just, I'm so happy to be here. I, my family is in PEI and, and uh, I want to be close to them. It's important to me. I want to come home. I want to be by the ocean. I love Halifax. I just, until I don't want to come hum home here anymore, which I can't imagine if that would ever happen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is just, I want to come back. I want the pace to be that what my inner landscape understands, and, and that's the maritime feel. Well, I'm so happy. I mean, we, that was a long time ago, 2006, that we played that ECMA together? Yeah. Yeah. That was terrifying and awesome. I remember I was backing up Matt Anderson. I had never met Matt Anderson before. <laughs> And it was single, <laughs> it might still be the most terrifying moment of my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. But we all knew then, and especially because I was just starting at CBC, and, and I know the CBC, especially in Halifax, was so was in, important to the kind of the early days, and everyone yeah. was talking about you at the CBC. It's just so, so lovely to see how far you've come and, and how beautiful your music still is. So thank, thank you, you for so it. much, and thank you to the CBC. I really wouldn't you know, be where I am if it weren't for the CBC. So here in Halifax. You're not welcome. Not you're, you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Rose Cousins, thank you everybody. So much. Rose Cousins. All right, time for one more guest today on our Q Live at the ECMA show. Are you having a good time so far here at the Marquee? 
This man is a true legend of Canadian music. His band, Great Big C, performed at one of the very earliest East Coast Music Awards. He recently sold out two nights right here in Halifax, a perfect end to his massive North American tour. Some call him the second handsomest man from Newfoundland. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry, Rex Murphy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for my friend and yours, Alan Doyle. <laughs> With the bright moon shine. Gonna ask her to go what a show. What a show, man. What a show you got going on. <laughs> Fantastic. How are you doing? Well, I'm delighted to be here. I'm almost done. This is literally the last thing I got to do for this leg of the tour. I have like four weeks off after we finish this little shindig here. Oh, man. Well, thanks for sticking around for us. No, it's great. It. It's awesome to be back in Halifax. And what a treat it is to be part of the East Coast Music Awards again. What a weekend. And, you know, Halifax is important place. I've been saying it all weekend. If you're a band from Newfoundland, there is no city on earth more important than Halifax, Nova you, Scotia. You said that to me. I played, it's true. I played the, the Cameron House. Yeah. Uh, not the Cameron House. The, the, uh, what's the name of that bar? The Company House. I played the Company House and I was on my way there and I texted you and I said, this is our first gig in Halifax. And I said, I hope it goes well. And you said, man, if you can do it in Halifax. It was like New York, New York. You yeah, were I like, if you can make it there, you'll make it anywhere. But you well, really believe that. Why? why? Well, no, because it's a very practical reason. And like, you know, we, we great big C in the early 90s, we started, we wanted to, you know, tour across the country. And the first thing you got to do if you're a band from St. John's is tour across Newfoundland. Yeah, right. And yeah. that's a big jaunt, you know, and that's a lot of geography to cover and an expensive piece of geography. Then there's a ferry and you end up in, you know, like the, the next big city after you leave St. John's mm -hmm. is about 27 or 28 hours travel away. Yeah. And it's here in Halifax. And so you need it really bad. Like, you, you know, you need, and I was so grateful when, when we showed up here in the early uh, 1950s. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, we, and we, like, we, we were so lucky because we were, you know, had our apprenticeship in the pubs back home on George Street and down in Water Street and Duckworth Street kicking around that when we came and we arrived at the lower deck, it was like, it was a bar that was perfect for us and we were perfect for it. Right. You know, so it became a big stepping stone for us. And, and you guys played one of the early ECMAs, right? You played one of the... Yeah. Well, I think the ECMAs is right around the same age as my <laughs> music career. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. is it amazing to see how much it's grown? Or? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And I mean, it's just cool to be hanging around in the, in the, in the bar a couple of nights, or last night and the night before. Not that I would have went out <laughs> to the bar before I was to appear on your show. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Not that Alan and I were at the bar until 3 in the morning. <laughs> we would never do that. We're professionals. <laughs> my brother was speaking with your brother at the bar. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and, uh, we heard it was all anecdotal. We well, Gordy's mom is playing piano in the bar. Gordy right? Sampson's mom, Flo yeah, Sampson, Flo playing is piano. Playing, and it's just like we're all there singing songs around, and then like someone gets a fiddle. And it's, I just love the community, like Rose was saying. It's a special community uh, in the Atlantic Canadian uh, music scene because I think early on, and maybe it's because of the ECMA, I don't know, but it, like early on, certainly in my career, I think everybody from this scene realized that it's however good anyone else is doing only helps us like yeah. it was great like in the in the mid 90s when the rankins were going gangbusters and ashley and natalie and and like every time any international festival buyer or national record company came down to the east coast and liked something with a fiddle or an accordion in it we all went thank god like, <laughs> and, uh, so we were always trying to help each other because it was just uh, and i think it's still like it I'm, I'm so excited you're here. You're going to play a song. What's it going to be? I think we should just do a Come On, Come On, Come Out With Me. It's the sort of the title track of my tour. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is, how many days have you been out now? Um, 392. I don't know. We started, this, <laughs> the tour started in January in Seattle, and I think um, the second night, last night in Halifax, was our 70th gig already this year. Our 70th gig in three months. So this is it. This is the <laughs> last. This is the last thing he has to do before he gets to go home to his family. Would you please put your hands together for the great Alan Doyle and the beautiful Ben? Excuse me if I ask too much But I've bit my tongue for long enough I beg your pardon if you please Come on, come on, come out with me I've been gone for far too long 
And I worry hard that you've moved on And I wish your prayer a song or oh, play Come on, come on, come out with me I spend my whole life waiting for the night Running from the devil in the middle of the deep dark sea Hold the door, man, if I ask you once or twice Come on, come on, come out with me Come on, Halifax Oh, come on, come on, come out with me Like you would, like you would And there's a band of gypsies a rolling in the door And they've been doing it since half past two They came all the way from Florida Come on, come on, come out with me I put on your body dress so fine We're gonna have ourselves a time We'll go on, sit on one, two, three. Come out, come out, come out with me. I spent my whole life waiting for the night. Running from the devil in the middle of the deep dark sea. Hope you don't mind if I ask you once or twice. Come on, come on, come out with me. Oh, come on, come on, come out with me. The song is called Come Out With Me. It's from his latest album, A Week at the Warehouse. Give it up for Alan Doyle and the beautiful band. And that is a wrap. That's all the time we have from our live show here at the Murky Ballroom in Halifax, Nova Scotia. We're just getting started. If you're listening on the radio, stick around for a conversation with Celestine, plus more great music. Please, big thanks to all of our amazing live guests today. Thank you to Halifax for being an amazing crowd. Thanks to the folks at the East Coast Music Awards, the staff at the Marquee Ballroom, the Q team here today, the folks back in Toronto, and the CBC staff in Halifax. You can catch up on all the highlights from this weekend's East Coast Music Awards at cbcmusic.ca. I'm Tom Bauer. Later on. <laughs>